Hello and welcome to another Final Cut Pro 10 tutorial. This time taking a look at the Cine Style Color Assist plugin for Final Cut Pro 10. Now, this is a really cool plugin. Now, I don't know if many of you know, but the Cine Style profile for uh, Canon and other digital SLR cameras basically gives you a flat image so that you can then pull more sophisticated grades afterwards. So to go along with that, they've also now delivered this Color Assist plugin slash application which allows you to grade your clips more effectively um, and it's a plugin that's available for a variety of host applications but in this case obviously we're looking at Final Cut Pro 10 um, and yeah basically it's a separate application that runs also like a plugin um, it's it's really cool so the best way for me to demonstrate this is, is just to show you basically how it works now uh, Color Assist lives in your uh, effects browser, as do most plugins, under Technicolor. And drag over the Cine Style Color Assist onto your desired clip. Uh, you can see that I've got this clip of this zombie person walking away from, well, walking towards this cool golden structure. And then, in the inspector, which you can reveal by clicking on this button here, there's an option called Send Clip. And on, all you need to do is double click that. Voila, it loads it into Color Assist, which obviously is this entirely new application. How exciting. Now, what I want to do is just give you a brief overview of the interface and also how the different controls work um, and also giving you my opinion on it. So over on the right hand side, very quickly, you've got the histogram, waveform and vector scope. They may be hidden. There's a button here to the right hand side, which you can uh, toggle them on and off depending on whether you want to see them. You've also got history um, and metadata as well. Um, so on the first tab over here, um, you can see, well, you can see there's two tabs. You've got the file browser and the color corrector. And the file browser browser is basically here so that you can actually start in Color Assist. You can go to File Browser, load up a file and then send it to Final Cut without even without even needing to have it in Final Cut Pro 10 first. Now one of my one gripes with this program is the fact that it doesn't retain your in and out points. Uh, you can see that we've actually loaded in the entire clip which is it's a 20 second clip, and bearing in mind we're only actually using th 2 or 3 seconds of it in the actual edit. It would be nice if it just had some template handles just to show you the region of interest. I appreciate the fact that obviously you need to be able to see uh, what it does to the rest of the clip in case you need to add more footage, but that's just one of my problems with it. But one of the things I really love on the other hand is the fact that by default it has second screen full screen playback and what I mean by this is if we just go into the preferences you can see that you've got a full screen mode uh, which will put color assist into a full screen I'm just going to leave that now but you've also got a secondary playback window so if you have an external monitor plugged in like I do straight away your footage loads up with nothing else on that screen but just full screen 1080p footage on your secondary monitor so you can see uh, get a full screen reference as well as a monitor reference which is one of the features I really, really wish Final Cut Pro 10 had, because on Final Cut Pro 10 you can move your viewer onto the second display, but then obviously it takes it away from the first display. It's nice to have a viewer with your timeline and a full screen playback as well, uh, but obviously you need something like a Magix, um, sorry, like an Ajax card uh, to do that on Final Cut Pro 10. But this is just built in, in with the software, which is awesome. So you've loaded in your footage. You can skim to see your footage. You can also play it back. It even plays the sound. You can mute that if you want by clicking on this button here. Like I said, let's just go ahead and look at the first tab. So the first tab under the color correction is looks. And this is basically loads of preset looks to get you started. Um, there was an Instagram joke I made uh, the other day in a previous tutorial. So if you still like Instagram, here's your Instagram filter, the vintage photo look. And all you need to do is double click to apply. Now, one of the things that's really cool, which I'll demonstrate quickly for you now, is that you can actually save up to nine compositions per file. And what I mean by this is, if we now hit Command S, if we now double click on another one, let's choose let's choose something stronger with with more difference, and now choose Command S. You can see up top now we've now got two different uh, files. Uh, sorry, two different compositions up here, and we can toggle between these two by double clicking on them.
um, if you so wish. Then all we need to do is press Command T, which is the shortcut to center editor, which basically will send these compositions back to Final Cut Pro 10. And now you can see on the color compositions uh, menu, there's a drop down here and we can choose one or two. So we can choose to cycle between these looks so we can create multiple looks for a clip and then just very quickly toggle which ones we like. Also there's a mix slider here which basically allows the strength. So we really bring that down to zero uh, that has basically disabled the color correction and then we can just choose how much we want to apply so something like that would obviously be more effective uh, when using something as strong as the vintage photo filter rather than setting to 100% where you're really killing a lot of the color that the cameras managed to pick up. Anyway let's go back over to color assist and basically what I want to do is create a new look. Over here we've got some toggles on each of the different tiers um, this one is basically a bypass all which uh, turns them all off so you can just look at the raw footage and then you've got the solo so you can just look at what each individual parameter is doing by just soloing which ones you want and turning the rest off and then you've also got this reset button we just go ahead and press reset because we don't want to start with the look we want to create an entirely new look from scratch let's hop over into color controls and now you'll see something that if you're familiar with color grading applications or just most uh, preset color tools, this will probably look familiar. We've got our color skews for our highs and our lows, our, our wills here. And then you've also got some of the, the gains and powers up here, uh, which allow you to boost the brightness for each of the different uh, mid highs and lows. And then you can also color skew them. Again, I want to reiterate a point that I often say in my color correction tutorials is that don't mess around with the blacks too much because if you have colorful blacks you can see it just r kills the image really quickly but luckily there's a nice little reset button here which will reset the color wheel so what I want to do is bring up some of these oranges from the building what I'm going to do is bring them up in the highs and then give it a nighttime feel by bringing down the blues like that and then we've also got a saturation slider which I'll bring down a bit as well okay so we've played around with some of these settings here uh, you can also uh, fine-tune these by typing in the values that you want. The next tab is the key selector tab. Now this basically allows you to pull a secondary color correction by defining a region, say this building, and you can literally just draw onto the image and you can see down here we're building a mat of what color region we're going to affect and you can just carry on clicking and dragging every time you do it just adds to the image. You can obviously reset it all. Uh, by just using this reset button here. You can also do a large re region select select large region selection by just uh, drawing say like a square here with this tool uh, but obviously that's going to get a lot more colors. Uh, let's reset that again. Basically these upper tools here correspond to the region you're selecting um, and these lower tools are the manipulation of that region. Um, you can see there's a few sliders that we can access here. Luminance I want to play around with, just so I get as little background area as possible. So you can see we can boost the saturation, or we can decrease it. I'm going to boost it a bit, and I want to put some more golds back in here as well, just like that. Now that we've done this, we can obviously nip back over into the color corrector, and if we just bring down some of these blues, obviously it's going to leave a lot of the golds in that we just uh, finely tuned here. The one shame about the key selector is the fact that it only allows you to make one secondary adjustment as far as I'm aware. What that means is that we can't now say select some of these dark areas and make a secondary adjustment to them. We can only make this uh, have one key selector per composition. The final tab is the curves. Now this is great because one of the best features of this program is the curves purely because Final Cut Pro 10 doesn't have them. And that's really frustrating because they're really powerful ways of manipulating color. Uh, in fact, you don't even need to use the color controls if you're good enough um, and familiar enough with curves because you can pull up the, the highs and the lows um, in here. And then basically over here we've got toggles of all the different color channels and we can boost them. Basically your upper region here represents uh, your light blues and down here represents your darker blues. What you can also do is use this draw tool which is really cool. If you just click on draw custom curve you can literally just create a ridiculous curve like that. Choose close and now you can see obviously it, it looks rubbish but you get the idea. There's also some preset curves but just bear in mind that these primarily affect the uh, the RGB curve over the uh, individual parameters. You can also color drop as well um, if you want to pick whip to the image. 
Uh, you can drag these points onto other points and then that will erase the points like that. So I just drag this to the end like that and you can see we've now erased all the points. You've also got sliders up the sides here which can drop the strength of them as well. So now we've created this grade that we really like, we've picked out some of the key colours that we wanted to manipulate. Now we just want to save the look, so there's actually a save button down here, or you can press or you can press Command S, but you can also add the look. So by clicking add look, you can create a custom look, we're going to call this gold boost night, and save. And then that look will actually come under the looks menu. You can see gold boost night is now there. Now we just want to save the look. Now if we press Command T, and send that to the editor. We hop back over to Final Cut Pro 10. Sometimes it takes a few minutes to register and to update. How does this system actually work? Well, you can see that we've now got a uh, event called Color Assist, and basically it sends these clips new with the plugin already applied uh, to Final Cut Pro 10 uh, in a particular event. Then we can even go as far as dragging these clips back into the timeline, applying Color Assist. And you can see it all even remembers the three compositions that have been applied to this particular clip, which is obviously very handy because if we deleted this clip from the timeline, let's delete both instances of the clip and then bring the clip back out, apply color assist, and bam, it knows exactly which clip it is and which effects have been applied to it. And then we can obviously bring down the mix. So that is basically an overview of Color Assist, Color Assist, how it works, how it integrates with Final Cut Pro 10, how you can send clips uh, between the applications, and also how to use, obviously, all of the color correction tools within Color Assist. Hopefully this was useful. Um, I've tried to share some of my pros and cons of Color Assist um, and what I'd like them to include. Uh, but ultimately, if you're looking for a color grading program to integrate into your Final Cut Pro workflow, this is probably the tightest integration you'll get. Um, but obviously, you're limited to individual clips as opposed to something like Blackmagic Da Vinci which allows you to import Final Cut Pro 10 timeline whereas this obviously is a clip by clip basis uh, so it's, it's a different formulae I suppose. Uh, one final quick tip is this lovely slider here which allows you to adjust the size of the previews thumbnails uh, which is obviously very handy. There are some more features if you'd like a follow-up tutorial I can make that uh, just let me know, leave comments in the description, and I'll be back soon with some brand new Final Cut Pro 10 tutorials. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys soon.